Hello and welcome everybody to episode 10 of the podcast. I'm Michael. I'm Noah. And we are the Knights of Entertainment, a podcast covering topical news and deep dives into your favorite and unknown comic books, movies, games, and more weekly. We appreciate you tuning in and hope you enjoy the show. We are covering Overlord once again tonight. Um, but before we do, please like, follow, and subscribe, and we will get into this deep dive. Alrighty. Um, tonight we are covering Overlord once again. Uh, we are going into more details of Nazarek, the tomb, uh, more of the NPCs. These are the area guardians area? of Nazarek. Like outside the uh, tomb? Not outside the tomb. They're still within the tomb itself. Uh-huh. Uh, basically, they're kind of like floor guardians. Floor guardians in general cover an entire floor of Nazarek. Yeah. Area guardians basically cover it just areas within. So, the so Nazarek's like the little location, not the whole country and or Naz- the world. Nazarek is like the dungeon. Okay. The, 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 Their uh, base. The tomb of Nazarek, basically. They're the base of uh, what was originally the guild called Einzel Gone. Mm-hmm. And then the main character that we follow, which is the, ske- uh, the skeleton yeah. guy, the overlord of Nazarek. Which is the reason the title is Overlord. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, basically, he took the name Einzel Gone, so that way, if there was any friends that he had within this new world, they could look for him because uh, they would know the name. Right. His original name before changing it to Einzel Gone was uh, Mamonga. Uh, well, Mamonga. Mamonga. Mamonga the skeleton, <laughs> the undead Overlord, <laughs> and guild leader. So. Alrighty, uh, getting into the first of the area guardians that we have tonight, uh, we have Pandora's actor. Uh, he is a level 100 NPC character. He is a doppelganger so that stands five foot ten inches. Fucking Nazis, what he is? He, he is dressed like one. <laughs> uh, he is known as the ever changing faceless phantom. Uh, well, he's fucking surprised. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, they fucking caught me! Oh shit! <laughs> Uh, a doppelganger, uh, for those who don't know the word, but I'm sure no way does, basically means that they, they copy the appearance and mannerism. Yeah, apparently I have a few throughout the city, I've been told. <laughs> actually, and when I find them, bro, I'm going to kill all of them. Uh, he was also able to actually um, transform into all 41 of the original uh, Einzel Gone guild members. And take on their appearance, abilities, everything. You think so? He can turn into any of them, right? Mm-hmm. You think he's ever just stripped down and see what they look like naked? Uh, with the way the characters for Einzel Gone the Guild looked, you might not want to. Okay. <laughs> not in beer, uh, not unless you're into Cthulhu-like creatures. That's a that's a weird thing. Like shape shifted, right? How do they know what a person's private parts look like? Like, I mean, he does have uh, mind reading abilities. So. Oh. Cause like I thought about Mystique, right? Yeah. And she just shifts into whoever, right? But we don't know what they. She doesn't know what their titties look like or their their dick. No, I mean, in does general, she? No. Right. Like, unless she's seen them naked. So what is she just picks whatever floppy dick she can think of? <laughs> whatever kind of matches. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. Yeah. Well, no, because sometimes dick don't dicks. Listen, sometimes dick don't match the color that you have on the outside. <laughs> more information you don't want to know like you'll have like a, a lighter skin tone on the outside right on on the visible part and you, and you, got, and you got a really dark dick that you that people when the people see like damn that's that's a real dark dick compared to your other skin tone you know i'm just i'm not saying from personal experience but you know go on uh he is the area guardian of the treasury and he is the financial manager of Nazarek. So he's like an accountant? Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh and during the guild's time before it went to this new world, um Mamonga at the time, now Einzel Gone, but yeah. he used to be called Mamonga. Um, he was the like financial person of the guild since he was the overseer and stuff like that. He was the overlord of the guild itself. So he took care of the guild's finances and all that kind of stuff. So whenever Momonga created Pandora's actor, he was the one the, he was Pandora actor's creator. Um, he basically wrote him to be the um, the financial person for Nazarek in the character bio and stuff like that. And he basically uh, made him guardian of the treasury for that reason. He looks like he hasn't decided whether he wants to have one arm in or one arm out. <laughs> you know how like, some guys have the fucking jacket over their shoulders? It, 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 he tries to do things that make him look cool. Yeah, well, so. it ain't working. Like, he's halfway committed <laughs> to this one. 
Uh, he wears a neo-Nazi style uniform. With oh hat. no, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. uh, with a hat that bears the crest of Ein Oh, so that the what crest. Yeah. To you. He has an egg-shaped head with three holes protruding from his face. Um, and he has very exaggerated mannerisms and a character that Momonga thought was cool at the time when he created him. <laughs> Fucked him up then. But now finds it humiliating and embarrassing when he looks at him. <laughs> Jesus. Just like, just like when parents look at their children. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you raised them now. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, he does, however, uh, he thinks practically, uh, like his creator, basically. They, uh, one thing to note, um, I didn't mention it in the last episode, but, um... When the guild moved to this new world, the NPCs that are in this world that had an actual creator of one of the the guild members, Mm -hmm. they inherently took on some of their real personality traits. So how um, Peronchina was a freak, uh, Shaltier Bloodfallen is a freak too. Jesus. So they they follow a lot of what their written uh, like flavor text Mm -hmm. shows. But they do take on some of the characteristics of the actual person that created them. Okay. So, kind of like how, um, also I said how Aura and uh, Shaltir argue, like brother and sister. Yeah. Buku Buku Chagama and Peronchino were both brother and sister, so they argue in the same way, basically, is them. I argue with my sisters a lot. My <laughs> sister. I wish I could drop kick on the face. Moving on. <laughs> So, like I said, he uh, he basically he takes a uh, practical approach to stuff the way uh, Einzel Gone does. You know, he thinks critically about stuff before he does it and everything like that. Oh, so an anti Luffy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he also will question Einz. Uh, oh, you questioned me, huh? You fucking not. <laughs> yep. Uh, basically, he'll question him like if he wants to clarify the orders that he's given, or he'll make suggestions to the orders that are given to him and stuff like that. Um, he does not. Uh, he, he doesn't want to do this to just try to interpret interpret the orders given to him. He wants to basically understand the intentions behind the orders themselves. Oh, oh so he's a conscious Nazi. Yeah, ain't yeah, that something? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ayn's created his backstory to have him loving taking care of items in the treasury and stuff like that, since he's the area guardian of the treasury. Mm-hmm. He didn't want Pandora's actor in the flavor text anyway, before he became a real person to like hate being in the treasury. So he gave him a reason to want to be there, okay. which is like, he loves magic items and gold and stuff like that. So, uh, in the new world though, uh, when they went to this new world, uh, he conducts tests on uh, new items that they find, on new spell types and stuff like that. He's like the person that experiments with it all. That's cool. Um, until the new world, uh, his existence was not known by most of the NPCs. There's only certain characters that actually knew he even existed. <laughs> so, like, um, I think it was in the first... Uh, uh, what was it? I think episode 9 or 10 of the first season... Um, Ainz was taking uh, Albedo to the treasury with him to go get some of these uh, powerful weapons that are down there so that way he could fight Shaltier since she was being mind controlled at the time Mm -hmm. he was taking her with him to the treasury and he's like yeah we're gonna go uh, talk to Pandora's actor and she even says it's like I've heard of him but I've never met him like even the NPCs most of them they may know of him kind of but Mm -hmm. they've never seen him um also, the other NPCs are jealous of Pandora's actor. Why? Since he was... Well, oh, not for... face. <laughs> okay, creepy ass hands. They want to have a bowling ball face. No. Imagine wiping his ass. So with those long ass fingers. Those fucking long ass fingers. <laughs> uh, they're jealous of him because he was created by Ainz. Oh, okay. And since Ainz is the only guild member that the NPCs still see, and that they think that uh, the rest of the other guild members abandoned them and just left them mm-hmm. for what they are, they look at Ainz as like they're like the one person that had compassion to stay with them. So they they feel jealous of Pandora's actor since he was created by Ainz, kind of like his child, basically. Teacher's pet, I guess. Yeah, kind of. Uh, he has a karma rating of negative fifty. Uh, so basically means he's almost neutral. Uh, yeah. He's eh, a little evil, but not extremely. 
and his hobby is managing magical items. <laughs> he loves to manage them, clean them. He, even in some of the later episodes in different seasons, he's going around saying, can't I just please touch the magic items again? <laughs> He's got almost like a sexual desire to have one. <laughs> uh, alrighty. Uh, next guy that we have. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is this? A fucking cockroach. Shohuko. He is a level 30 NPC character. Uh, he is an insect insect druid that stands one foot. <laughs> he stands at one foot. A one foot cockroach. A one foot uh, Fat ass fucking giant ass cockroach. <laughs> Be a fight to the death if you're rocking that cockroach in the middle of the night. His epithet, uh, he is known as the as the worst resident in Nazarek. <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking cockroach. <laughs> the one thing nobody wants in their house yeah. nowadays or anything is just cockroaches in general. Uh, he stands on two on his two rear legs, and he wears a bright red cape decorated with golden thread, and carries a scepter with him. He sure does, and he's got a crown too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he is the area guardian for the Black Capsule. Is the name of it. This is a pit that he calls home, along with his cockroach army. Oh God, one of these little fuckers. A bunch of little cockroaches, yes. Uh, basically, the the Black Capsule is an area that's basically like a trap area so you don't fall into it but throughout nazarek there's these teleportation sets so if you step on them it activates the trap and you get teleported to his area it's called the black capsule jesus uh it will trap you within this <laughs> teleport you to him and in this area where he lives he will devour you <laughs> god uh are you at least dead and he, it, no, no, you're alive. Does it alive, huh? Son of a bitch. Yeah, you're alive whenever it happens. Yeah. With the cockroach army. There's an episode in season three that has uh, some intruders into Nazarek in this new world. They step on that uh, the teleportation section of the floor, teleports them there, and they struggle against all these cockroaches that they see. They try to plead with him, saying, we'll give you anything, we'll give you money, we'll give you anything. He's like, why would I do that whenever I have exactly what I want in front of me? My family is tired of cannibalizing themselves. Jesus. They eat themselves? Yes. That is the other part of this. Uh, when there are no living things to eat, they cannibalize themselves. Well... These cockroaches. It's a bottle of the fittest, I guess. Now on the flip side, uh, he acts like a noble and a gentleman. He speaks very politely. Uh, he's willing to listen to people and is open-minded, while also also considering their circumstances, even if he rejects it second la seconds later. Hmm. So he speaks with a, kind of like a gravitas of dignity a little bit. Yeah. Like he's not the kind where it's like, he doesn't just say stuff. He's actually very cordial <laughs> until his, his horde of cockroaches eat you. Jeez. So he's old, rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, New Ridge has a whole different way of talking. Yeah. Yeah, they really do. I can't wait till I'm New Ridge. <laughs> you find out real quick how I talk. Uh, sadly, his karma rating is only negative 10. Well, he's not the way he eats people. What? But he doesn't do it uh, out of malice. It's not out of malice, no. It's more of like natural instinct. Oh, I guess. Since he is. Yeah. I mean, imagine that little fucker, a one foot cockroach king basically coming at you. God. <laughs> I don't know how fast did he go. He's on two fucking legs. I bet I, get, I can't run him. You don't think he could scurry? Does he until he drop down? Where does he put his little scepter? <laughs> his ass? Well, in that same episode that I, I was uh, talking about just a, minute, a moment ago, uh, there's a, uh, a a dude that shoots a bow at him, thinking that he can, you know, fight back. Mm -hmm. um, he just, like, deflects it. <laughs> like, Jesus. I'm like, what the fuck are you going to do with this? <laughs> but he is on good uh, good terms with uh, Kikaitis. The uh, the ice floor guardian. Mm -hmm. They're actually friends. Are they both like bug types? Yeah. Oh, that makes so they kind of get along, yeah. Yeah. But uh, other people don't want to deal with Kyohuko uh, uh, hey. because he's a roach. Hey. So. Fucking cockroach, yes. <laughs> uh, next person we have uh, Oriel Omega. Just a blind chick. Uh, she is a level 100 uh, NPC. Uh, she is considered an immortal human, and she stands about five and a half feet. Five-five, to be exact. 
So is that taller or shorter than you? That's taller than me. <laughs> I had to. Uh, she is the five foot three at home, man. Uh, she's the area guardian and resident of the eighth floor and an area called the Cherry Blossom Sanctuary. Uh, she is depicted as a young girl that wears traditional attire like a shrine maiden would, which includes a red hakama and a wide haori. Yeah. So you know the normal standard shrine maiden style clothing. Uh, she is seen as a rational person, thinking along the same lines as Sebus, the butler. Uh, basically, Sebus is kind of a um, a rational character within the uh, the realm of uh, Yggdrasil and uh, the new world of Overlord. Uh, and she is very high-spirited, so she's not depressed all the time. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, she is also the leader of the Pleiades Seven Sisters, uh, the Battle Maids. Uh, the maids, I'm sure. I don't know if you've seen pictures of them yet or not. I don't think so. Last well, uh, part of the Pleiades. Mm-hmm. The Pleiades, yeah. Uh, the Pleiades is a a, uh, a spin on the Pleiades of, uh, I believe, Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. So they use the same the same name basically. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll talk about the the Pleiades Seven Sisters and Sebus in the next episode. Oh, okay. Are they hot? Uh, Are they all of age, legal age too? Uh, <laughs> they, it's, never mind. They, they'd be more on the level of uh, Albedo. So the you know who Albedo is already though. Um, let's see here. Uh, she also controls the uh, teleportation gates within Nazarek. So when you step on that uh, trap teleportation that sends you over to uh, Kilhuko, mm-hmm. yeah, she knows about it. So yeah, she she's uh, allowing you to go to that. Uh, that black capsule pit. Dirty, dirty bitch. <laughs> uh, and she is the only human NPC that possesses eternal life. So she will not die, basically, of her own accord. Yeah, so the mortal. Mm-hmm. Immortal character. You've got the game sheet, basically, in front. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Shows you almost everything about her. And surprisingly, she doesn't look like a lot of the other... Uh, the other Nazarek characters. No? No. More normal? A little bit more normal. Okay. Kind of like what you'd expect out of a uh, Japanese anime, mostly with the uh, the Shrine Maiden style uniform. Yeah. Why like not she, a fucking schoolgirl uniform? Yeah, it's not school, a schoolgirl uniform at all. I'm no. surprised, yeah. Don't worry, I'm sure they can make that for you. I know. <laughs> they do have the battle maids, you know, so they still have the maid costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, alrighty, next one is Negre- oh, God. <laughs> Negretto. Uh, her level is somewhere over 90, but nobody knows for sure because it's not listed in the actual game manuals or anything like that. Uh, and it wasn't listed in any of the manga either. They just said that, you know, she's one of the stronger characters. I love the irony of her having scissors and unfucking kempt hair yeah. that she'd never cut. She is the older sister of both Albedo and Rubedo. God dang. Yep. She's depicted with no skin on her face. Is that... What? Oh, God. She has no... It's all muscle. Like, she's got no skin on her face. Oh. She should probably cut it off with the scissors. But... Maybe. <laughs> uh, and she's got a mass tangle of black hair. Yeah, I see that part, yeah. She is so horrific looking. <laughs> when she was created... The other guild members all attacked her on site. Oh, Jesus. Because they apparently didn't know that uh, she was created by one of the other guild members. That's how horrific she looked. Uh, but so, uh, even though you see what she looks like, right? She actually has a soft spot for babies and infants until they turn the age of two. And then when she becomes indifferent to them. Two? Mm-hmm. It's a random age to stop? Yeah. Uh, she also does not actively seek harm towards any humans. Like, cool. she's not going after anybody. Like, her appearance is completely opposite to her actual personality, which is... A red hairy, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, and she's generally a compassionate individual. And uh, was one of the few uh, that didn't want to harm the innocent people of the kingdom mm-hmm. when uh, Nazarek started to invade in this new world. Hmm. Like, she was one of the ones where it's like... Well, don't hurt the kids. Don't hurt, you know, babies. They don't hurt the kids unless they're two. Pretty much, yeah. 
Yeah, there was there was a thing. Uh, apparently, whenever uh, they were still in the game of Yggdrasil at the time, the only way you could get past her in the game was to hand her a doll that looked like a, an infant, <laughs> and then she would leave you alone. It reminds me of uh, Bloodborne. You fight this guy, and uh, he's the first main test in the game. Like, if you can get past him, mm-hmm. you're meant to play the rest of the game. If you can't, she go play something else. Yeah. Uh, Father Gasquin. And at some point, you find this little uh, a music box. That you, uh, you wind it up, and it plays little music, and it fucks his brain up for a, for a couple of seconds. Because when you first fight Gasquin, he's fast. Then he turns into a werewolf. He's fucking ten times faster, ten times stronger, and that little that little fucking uh, uh, pure gamers say don't use the the music box. It's cheap, but I'm not about to get my ass beat <laughs> over and over again. Hey, I'm not about to. I'm not above using a hack. Yeah, man, I, I will, I'm Eddie Guerrero. I would lie, cheat, and steal. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, she is the area guardian of the frozen prison. That is found on the fifth floor with Kokaitis. That's the floor guardian. So, mm-hmm. of course, frozen Kokaitis is ice, right. basically. But um, a side note is that whenever they uh, they went to this new world and they started their invasion against the kingdom in season... It started in season three and then went into season four with them invading the kingdom. Uh, she actually protected some of the kids. So they locked her in the frozen prison as a prisoner. <laughs> Like she wasn't allowed to leave after that because right. she actually tried to to help the kids, along with the next character, uh, which was also imprisoned at the same time because they both care for people. Uh, this is Pistonia. Fucking dog. Pistonia Shortcake Wanko. Fucking Full Metal Alchemist all over again. Heart level unknown. It has never been uh, spoken about on what level she actually is. Uh, she has a maid whose appearance is of a beautiful lady with a sheep herd, um, like a sheep herding type dog. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, she is benevolent, uh, despite her appearance, and a motherly figure that does not despise humans. Yeah. So she's not constantly trying to go after people. Uh, she also has like a, a motherly tone whenever she talks to like Aura and Mare. So she'll, uh, like, speak to them like children. <laughs> um, and she was created by a uh, guild member named Ankaro Mochimochi. Okay. Uh, the uh, guild member also created this uh, this penguin-type character named Eclair, Eclair, Eclair. <laughs> all spelled differently. Oh, wow. <laughs> a dick move. Because she loved food. So that's why her name was Mochimochi. <laughs> and then Eclair, Eclair, Eclair. And then this... Uh, Character's name is Pistonia Shortcake. <laughs> so, but uh, he's a fucking hungry man. Yeah, I, I might talk about it, Claire, Claire, Claire later on. But he's this uh, penguin that he thinks that he's going to. He was written in a flavor text to want to rule Nazarek, thinking that he's going to eventually rule. Oh up. wow! <laughs> but he's so incompetent he can't do it, <laughs> even if he tried. <laughs> uh, uh, next person that's going to throw him away for a loop. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck am I looking at? Like a fucking penguin just got stuck on someone's face. <laughs> Not a penguin, a fucking octopus. Picture <laughs> three for such a loop. It's a fucking thong. So subbed up like a fucking not even a camel toe anymore. It's an elephant toe. <laughs> Look at his fucking eyes miss fucking match. <laughs> With a leather straps and ashless chaff. What the fuck am I looking at? Jesus. <laughs> this so, is the character I was playing against. So, for you. who's this fucking deformity? <laughs> that is Neuronist Painkiller. Hey, don't have any no damn painkiller. A level 23. 23? That's pretty low. Uh, in the new world, there's very few characters that are even level 20, so... Oh, wow. <laughs> like, the strongest warrior, the head warrior for the kingdom is level, like, 30, so... Jesus. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that strong. Okay. Uh, Neuronus <laughs> has the appearance of a bloated corpse with tentacles. No, you don't say... <laughs> Heavy makeup. It's makeup. 
<laughs> and long fingernails with nail polish. Yeah, I saw that part. She also wears a black leather dominant extra suit. Is that what this is? <laughs> this fucking horror is wearing? <laughs> oh, there's worse pictures of that that I'm going to post with the video, so... <laughs> Uh, she is in charge of uh, torture. <laughs> yeah, just by looking at her, huh? That's, that's all she needs to do. Uh, she's in charge of torture and extracting information. Uh, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Just fucking let me close my eyes. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, she loves this job and inflicting pain and eating brains. Oh, God, a zombie. Uh, yeah, there was, there's a, uh, <laughs> in that same episode that these, uh, intruders basically get sent to go see Kyohuko, mm -hmm. there's another one that gets teleported to Neronis, and, um, she's got this torture tool, it's got spikes on the end of it, right, it's a little torture tool, but with spikes on the tip, she created it because the person that made her had kidney stones at one point, so what do you think she was gonna do? <laughs> I can figure it out pretty quickly. Yeah, the dude was screaming. The I imagine so. He's going up his fucking pee hole. Uh, she also thinks that she is more attractive than Albedo. No, she's dead wrong. She's got no mirrors in her fucking face. Uh, she's the guardian of the lower portion of the frozen prison on the fifth floor. So you have... You have uh, Negretto, which is uh, the basic area guardian of the prison, and Neronis is the, the area guardian of the torture chamber, basically, underneath it. Jesus. Her occupation is intelligence, special intelligence collector, or better known as a torturer. <laughs> uh, karma level is uh, 425 out of 500. Negative 425, sorry. I imagine so, yeah. Not, not positive. <laughs> It uh, looks like Honey Boo Boo. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> now I feel like an asshole. Oh, that was the one that I was waiting for you to see. I, know, I can tell you were. <laughs> one of the most disturbing looking characters. And she thinks she's sick. Yeah, she's sick, all right. Like a fucking tree trunk. <laughs> Uh, oh gosh. All right. <laughs> Next one we go to. God. She held to Tokitu. Level 78. Since I'm in Japanese. I can't read Japanese. <laughs> uh, he is the head chef of the canteen and the area guardian of it. What's he have on his back? That is a walk. What is that? The, the uh... Like the stuttle. Like the cooking. Oh, the cooking. Walk. Oh, that big yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he's got that strapped to his back with a chain. He carries a butcher's knife on his uh, on his side right there. Mm -hmm. So that way he can chop whatever he wants to with it. He's known as the... Please so tell me he actually cooks food, not fucking other human beings and stuff? No, he cooks food. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Uh, he's known as the fiery chef. And he has a large tattoo on his chest. It's in uh, Japanese on the, the picture itself. But... Uh, yeah. It says fresh meat. Dunk. <laughs> uh, and he is a, um, he's part of the orc species. What level is he? Uh, 78. 78. Not bad. No, no. I mean, most of the, the NPCs with the Nazarek are like pretty like, damn high up there. there. Yeah. yeah. Most of them range anywhere from like 50 on up. But uh, like just looking at Neuronis, the painkiller, you, you don't have to have a high level to see that. It's disturbing. So. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, Tokitu, uh, he has a uh, like a fanatical motivation for being a chef. Mm -hmm. And he values his diligence in that like field right. so like if you were to go up to him and say food sucks he's probably going to be pretty pissed he'll probably be on the menu after that too yeah I mean he's got a thing across this since he's like a pig style orc yeah like for, you know Japanese orc yeah. character fresh meat like <laughs> just been blazoned on him uh, and he also gets stunned when he's questioned about being a head chef <laughs> like the fuck are you talking about bro it's like, I am the head chef. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, weirdly enough, he's one of the only three people within Nazarene that actually have the cook's job class. 
So uh, most of the NPCs of the Nazarene have different job classes. Yeah. So for instance, Pandora's actor, it's uh, doppelganger, with his job class. Or okay. uh, excuse me, his uh, his racial class is oh, racial doppelganger. Class. Yeah. But every character basically has a job class as well. Some of them don't, but most do. His is uh, cook. And there's only uh, two other characters aside from him that have that job class. Uh, the last three, they're mentioned, but they never have um, like illustrations or visual appearances in the anime or manga or light novel. So damn. But they're just mentioned in passing. Okay. Uh, the first one you have Grant, uh, the character's name. He protects the area. He protects areas on the third and sixth floors, but not specified what he does basically. Huh. But his name is mentioned. Uh, the next one I am going to butcher this name, but um, <laughs> Gasho Kuko Chuo is the name. Uh, he's possibly a parasite. Uh, that guards the large hole on the sixth floor. And he holds the title within Nazarek of Worst Appearance. God, more than that, dirty <laughs> bitch? <laughs> Go ahead. That's pretty bad for the worst than that. Jesus. And he uses humans as his house. You should fucking rack of humans like a fucking bunch of logs just stacked on top of each other. Yeah, yeah, like that's it, that is good. Jesus, so God only knows what it looks like. Yeah, but like it, just a bunch of bones, probably. And if your worst appearance in Nazarek, uh, I mean, you look at the picture again of uh, Narun uh Naronis. God. <laughs> Uh, and the last one that uh, is mentioned within the the, the canon Overlord, because there's a couple others that are mentioned within like the Overlord game that they made and stuff like that that have nothing to do with the the actual manga or light novel. Mm -hmm. uh, last one is uh, Gurren or uh, Gurren G U R E N. Uh, it, he's basically a huge slime that lives on the seventh floor that Demiurge, the demon, actually guards. Mm -hmm. uh, it lives on the seventh floor uh, in the river of lava that runs through that floor. Speaking and about lava, you know you can drink, drink lava? Just once, though. <laughs> Go ahead. Why just one time? <laughs> one time. You can do it one time. <laughs> uh, and Gurren, he acts as the area guardian of that river itself basically hmm. uh, and he will ambush unsuspecting people that approach this area and drag them to their death drag them to their death mm, of course of course why would it not be to their death I mean you are invading I don't know just let them leave I mean you are invading Nazarek you think they're going to let you live oh, it'd be nice <laughs> I will say uh, one other note on uh, the uh, hole monster. Mm -hmm. the, the name that uh, I am not going to butcher again. Uh, that area guardian is so bad that nobody wants to go see it that um, apparently Imes was going to send Aura to deliver something to him. Yeah. And uh, Aura said, can't I make Mari do it? <laughs> they don't want to go see it. That bad, huh? Yeah. Pretty bad, pretty bad. Jesus. But uh, that is the... What the, what the Molly crew they have here at this fucking base? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So you have the, the floor guardians that we've covered. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, your normal, basically like... Main uh, event boss level. Characters. Yeah, boss characters. These are like... Your fucking goofy ass side people. Yeah. And usually like, uh, for example, with Pandora's actor... He's usually with the floor guardians most of the time. Mm -hmm. Like he, you could almost consider him like a ninth floor guardian just because he's constantly around the rest of them. Oh. Um, one thing I didn't mention as well is uh, Pandora's actor also takes uh, Einzel Gone's place in a bunch of different scenes within the anime because hmm. he's a doppelganger, so he can. Oh, he did pretty much, yeah. Yep. So you have uh, when Einzel Gone's uh, Einzel Gone is playing the character of uh, Mamo, uh, Mo, uh, Momon, the mm -hmm. knight, where you can, he could be basically in two places at once. Oh. So he'll have Pandora's actor take over his spot as Einzel Gone and play that character for people within the kingdom to see while he's going out being Momon, the actual warrior. Huh. 
So he he does get used. He's to useful, people. yeah. Yeah, very useful, and he can uh, replicate almost. He can replicate any of the forty-one uh, Einzelgon guild members, the original ones. Plus, he can uh, he can duplicate, I believe, four or five other people, but it's never specified who. Oh, okay. Hmm. But that's all the area guardians that we have. Uh, next week we'll go over the battle maids battle of maids. the tomb. God, I hope they're better looking than that one octopus. Oh, they're, they're, they're much Jesus better. Christ. Yeah, Neronist painkiller. Once you see that, you'll you'll want to take some... Uh, some painkillers. You, you'll want to overdose on them. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but that moves on to good old... Got some more Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary definitions. Are they going to be as bad as Neronist? Yes. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> I haven't read on this one. I'm I'm so fucking sorry for this. This was uploaded by Eaton Holgood on March third, twenty third, twenty seventeen. Oh boy, Granny Gagger. Oh God. An old woman that loves that to deep throat. Toothless is a plus. I kind of I kind of missed up. I kind of like messed up because I thought I was kept going. But so it's basically, an old woman that loves to deep throat. Toothless is a plus. So milk manners? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Toothless a little bit kind of. Uh... <laughs> Speaking about toothless, look at this next one. Uploaded by, I guess salt. It's S uh, C A U L T C U L T C U L T on October 9, two thousand three, Reno. A place where toothless strippers and worn out prostitutes go to die. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a theme going on with these two. We moved on from Vegas, went to Reno. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Last one. Uploaded by Brenda Taylor on July 10th, 2008. Uh, Javex balls. When going down on the mail, his balls smell like Javex. I looked up what Javex is. It's bleach. It's like a, it's like a different, it's like a brand of bleach that kind of got absorbed by Clorox. Yeah. So I don't know. Your balls smell like bleach. You need to figure something out in your life. See, uh, that, that's a, a, a... You know, I've never actually asked a girl what it smells like down there when she's doing down, going down on the business. I guess they don't complain, so... <laughs> I mean, I get... I, I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult, but... No, it's fucking bleach. No, it's not a compliment. Yeah, but bleach is a cleaner. Yeah, but it smells like fucking shit. <laughs> so, if it smells like chlorine... Chlorine, mate. Oh, well. I mean, you walk into a pool house and it smells like chlorine. Doesn't it smell clean? Personally, what you you do is you get one of those oatmeal bars of soap and get rid of some nice taste of oatmeal. You know? Or <laughs> some delicious breakfast, a nice oatmeal bar. I, I, I pretty much shower with, oat, with oatmeal bars. I smell fucking delicious. And nutritious. <laughs> So that's it for that for this episode. <laughs> With that, I think we will go ahead and end this episode. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Adios.